everyone. So I'm James Nelson, the CEO for Dero Gas and Power. We are an independent power producer in Papua New Guinea. We're 100% nationally owned. We're part of the MRDC group of companies. So we've got 12 shareholders. Uh, MRDC is one, the Hela Provincial Government is another, and then we've got 10 landowner subsidiaries who are um, oh, landowner subsidiaries of MRDC um, who are shareholders in our business. So we were formed back in 2018 um, and our shareholders are all um, landowner groups who are affected by the PNG LNG project areas. So we span from you know, up in, uh, up in the Heller province, um, deep in the highlands, all the way down through southern highlands, Gulf, and across the Gulf of Papua New Guinea to Papalea Layer, where our um, power station is. So in the background here, that's a bit of a snapshot of our um, 45 megawatt um, Duria Central Province power station. Um, and this is a photo of nothing to do with um, electricity, actually. It's, it's a photo of Dirio River, which is, um, which is a river that's in Southern Highlands province, and, and this is actually where we get our name as a business. And Dirio River's part of a broader ecosystem of rivers um, that, like our shareholders, extend deep into the highlands, um, up into, you know, up into the Hell province, um, flow all the way down through, uh, through Southern Highlands, through the Gulf province, into the Gulf of Papua. Um, and you know our, our sort of our story really is uh, you know just just as Duria River and, and the system of rivers that it's a part of has um, you know uh, been a source of life and sustenance for generations of Papua New Guineans historically um, and and generations uh, generations to come. Duria Gas and Power um, as a, an electricity providers and an IPP, we want to be a source of uh, economic empowerment and, and social benefit for, um, you know, generations of Papua New Guineans to come by investing in um, good quality, uh, reliable, sustainable electricity projects across the country. Pretty self-explanatory, um, this one. So this is, uh, this is a mix of generation um, in, in Papua New Guinea. So on the, on the left, we've got about 623 megawatts of, uh, of generation capacity installed across Papua New Guinea, um, about 46% hydro, 35% diesel and HFO, and a small amount of that is gas, about 18%. Um, when we focus on Port Moresby grid, which is where Durio primarily operates at the moment, um, that changes quite a bit. There's 47% gas. Uh, about 40% hydro and 11% diesel HFO. So what we're seeing here is a really nice balance of uh, renewables um, just through hydro with, um, with thermal. Um, I'd also say that for the PNG generation side of things, IPPs account for 51% of installed capacity. And in Port Moresby, IPPs account for nearly 70% of the installed capacity. So we, we are a critical um, you know, piece of providing electricity to PNG Power to meet, uh, to meet the electricity needs across the country. Now, in order for IPPs to um, operate effectively, um, and actually it's not just IPPs, um, PNG Power would would also be having uh, uh, internal um, internal uh, accounting for their generators to to their retail arm, I'm sure. But um, you know, all around the world, we see tariff structures for generation um, broadly broken down uh, as follows. Um, so, in order for us as IPPs to get to get licenses in order for us to build our power stations and then operate those power stations, we need a variety of approvals. One of them is regulatory approval. Um, I see various members of the NEA here today. Thanks for coming, good to see you. Um, the NEA and the IEEC before them have a regulatory model that, uh, that everyone needs to abide by and is subject to review. Um, that regulatory model says you have fixed cost components and you have variable cost components. So those, uh, those variable costs are fuel and maintenance costs associated with you know, the marginal cost of electricity production. That is, 
you know, what's the, what's the variable cost to produce one extra unit of electricity? And then there's fixed costs, which are the overhead costs that are needed to operate and maintain the power station, regardless of how much electricity that power station is, is putting out at any given period of time or uh, over any given period of time. Crucially, that fixed cost also recovers the cost of building the power station, which is the capital recovery charge. Um, and each of these four cost components, so you know, fuel and variable O&M and variable, and then the fixed O&M and capital recovery, each of these cost components are required by IPPs in order to make building a new power station positive investment. It's not unique to Papua New Guinea. This is a global tariff model. This isn't unique to the, to the power industry either. This is infrastructure and, um, you know, uh, unit pricing, um, you know, broadly. You have, you have fixed and variable costs of production. You need to recover all of those in order to be a profitable, uh, profitable enterprise. So in order for IPPs to, you know, continually invest for success, um, you know, IPPs, um, are contractually incentivised to ensure power generation assets are maintained to, to the highest quality. So we have we have provisions in our contract that says if you don't have, you know, the capacity available, then you know that your your, your invoices are, are reduced. Um, and in order to invite that private sector into the market to uh, you know to participate, we need certainty. We need certainty of payment. We need certainty that our contracts are going to be adhered to. So PNG, PNG's electricity sector follows a capacity market model. It's imperfect, but um, you know capacity uh, capacity markets are well used all around the world, um, and you know they're successful in other states. Um, and there's no you know there's no perfect you know there's no perfect model for uh, for an electricity market. Um, in capacity markets, the, the the biggest downfall is that there can be a greater overinvestment in generation capacity. Um, than electricity only markets, um, but that just means that we've got you know more capacity available in case of um, any outages um, through the network. Critically, though, um, capacity markets succeed where there's thorough planning and competitive and transparent tender processes. If you have these two things, if you have good planning processes for what new generation is required, when is it required, and um, where do we need it? And then that planning is, you know, taken through a very thorough and transparent tender process. Um, you get least cost generation. And that, you know, that least cost generation is then passed down the line to, to end users. So having said all of this, you know, Dirio, Dirio is a successful investment um, for our shareholders. It's got strong fundamentals. Our, our landowner shareholders, um, as, as I say, they're from, they're from rural parts of Papua New Guinea. They are you know, living in um, some areas that don't have any access to electricity, but they made a decision to invest in a power station in Port Moresby. Um, and you know, we're, we're beholden on, uh, on our only customer, PNG Power, actually you know, paying us on time and in full. Um, and despite that challenge, we are still committed to providing reliable power for Papua New Guineans today and for generations to come. Um, you know, we are looking at uh, we're looking at a variety of opportunities around the country, um, and you know, one of one of those is rural electrification. We've we've been granted uh, granted licences by the minister, by the NEA, to um, generate, distribute, and retail electricity across. Kikori District in Gulf Province, and we'll be looking to apply for more, more licences um, to build, own and operate mini-grids across the country. That's all for me.